Mike here. Glad you could join me. Uh, first time I made this video, I said 90 degrees instead of 180. And uh, it, I'm just not going to take the ribbing from that. I'm just not. So I'm redoing this. Uh, anyways, I've been seeing a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but a few Flat Earth videos pop up claiming that Google Earth is not actually a globe. And it uh, looks like a globe to me. And so I checked it out uh, to validate the claim. Um, basically, what they're doing is, and uh, I got my Sriracha bottle here. And if you can see the, uh, what, what they're doing is they're taking a ball and making this observation. Uh, you, you can see the uh, UPC symbol. And they're, they're turning this 180 degrees. Okay, that's one half turn. And then they're turning it another 180 degrees. And what they believe is that the UP symbol, UPC symbol should show up again if you make two full 180 degrees turns. And they're applying this to uh, Google Earth. And they're not coming up with the same observation on their Sriracha bottles. So we're going to examine that and uh, see if that's true. Now, uh, I'm not telling you what Flat Earth or channels I saw this on. And I do not set people out like that, okay? Because uh, th everybody's trying to make observations. And uh, I'm not even correcting this. I'm just, I did my own because as soon as I saw that, I knew immediately what was going on with it. But I just thought I'd share it uh, with you in case you do run into this, that Google Earth is actually a ball. So let's get into it. So some flat earthers are claiming, I've seen some videos pop up, that Google Earth is not actually a ball. And uh, their observation is pretty valid. Um, I mean, it makes sense with what they're doing. And uh, first of all, I'd like to stress, uh, I believe Google Earth is still shady. First of all, the North Pole should be covered in ice. Uh, second of all, they have chopped out this area here. They used to show a lot more of this. And now they have it just down to a square. Uh, a video I made earlier, I, I didn't find this little patch at all, but they still have a little patch of it here. And it actually doesn't, it, it's actually warm here 365 days a year. This is fresh uh, lake water at 38 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. And this is something that, um, that extends over 300 miles. And I do have the video of it extended a lot more than this. I'm not going to get to that right now. So they do cover some things up. Uh, this little dot here by it. Uh, exobiologist Dale Anderson, a veteran of several Antarctic research expeditions under the sponsorship of NASA. Well, then, so we have a pretty good idea why this area is covered up. Folks, this area should have been explored, been on Discovery Channel. It actually extends way further than this little patch they're showing here. And uh, this is the area that Admiral Byrd had found and put in his video. He said it's warm there all year round, and we have not heard a peep about it since Admiral Bird discovered it. And to me, that's wrong, because uh, most of the time we see Antarctica as this cold, cold place with wind blowing and snow. In that particular area there, it's not that way. So this observation that they're making is that... Um, they're grabbing the edges of Google Earth, and we have America here, and they're spinning it 180 degrees one turn. Straighten that up. And then they'll spin it again another 180 degrees. And their logic believes that since we've spun it twice 180 degrees, we should see America. And we do see America, but that's why America. We, we don't see this America here. And that's what they're saying, that somehow um, this is not actually a ball. We also are told that if we zoom in, that the effect's even more pronounced. In other words, uh, it'll take us three turns to get around, so let's try it. One, two, and as you can see, we have two full turns and we don't even see Hawaii yet. Hawaii's over this way some. And so it is more pronounced. It, it, it would take about three turns if we zoom in. But I'm going to show you that Google Earth is still actually a ball in a 3D modeling program. And I'm going to show you what's going on. And as I said, I'm not putting anybody down. It is a valid observation. Absolutely. Um, makes sense. But if you understand 
how 3D models work and how they look in 2D space, then you'll see why that even though it's a good observation, it, it's just a wrong observation. Okay, to show you how this works, I made a ball of Star Destroyer and I made a ball in Blender. And what happens is this ball is in 3D space. Right now I'm on top orthographic view. When we view this ball in 3D space, we, own, we don't see the full half of this ball. Okay? And so instead of trying to rotate this ball 180 degrees, I would just type it in the y, the y plane here. And when I type 180, it'll flip my blue and my red. Bam. Just like so. When you're in Google Earth, what you're doing, you're looking at a side like the blue here. And in order to rotate this 180 degrees in Google Earth, you would need to grab the edge right where the blue and red is to do a full 180 degree turn. But when you're looking at it in a 3D view like this, and it's a model, then you can see I can turn this, and I don't see the edges to grab to turn the full 180 degrees. And so what happens is when you're Google Earth, even though you think you're grabbing the edge and turning, um, you're not actually moving the 3D object 180 degrees. Okay, you're probably moving it about 160 degrees depending on your zoom level. And so I'll show you when we zoom in or zoom out in Google Earth. And I'm looking at a zoom out view. Uh, what you see in this box from the blue side, the blue face, is what I'm actually seeing. I'm not seeing the full, all of the blue side. And so it'd be impossible to grab. A 3D object in 3D space and rotate it 180 degrees. If I zoom in closer to this object, then it's going to take more rotations simply because I can't get back here to the edge here to spin it one full 180 degree turn.